just recorded this whole entire video walking down the road and I'm gonna have to start over because apparently I was only taking photographs. So anyway, so right now I'm in a sub suburb of Chicago. I'm uh, near O'Hara Airport and I'm just walking around. I found this park um, nearby, so I just thought I would just check it out. It looks like it's pretty well-traveled. There's a lot of folks around here walking, so it feels, it feels like it's pretty safe. Actually, uh, I went to another spot where there was a parking area and there was no one there, so I didn't uh, really feel safe going there, particularly with what's going on in the world right now. But anyway, so I actually came up here for a specific reason, and I flew out this morning, flew out of Atlanta, two hour flight, nice flight on Delta. And um, <clears throat> I have to have myself tested for the Rona. But anyways, <clears throat> two hour flight on Delta, and the aim of my trip was, was to come check out this vehicle that was like basically what I, an example of what I was looking for. So what I've been looking for for the past couple years is actually off and on, not all the time, but I did spend a qu quite a bit of time online recently. What I've been looking for is a Ford E350 1999 to 2003 7.3 liter van. And that could have been in any forms. It really just depends. Could be, could have been a box truck, could have been a service body, I'm open to an ambulance, whatever. I just wanted to do my ultimate build. And I've been working on trying to find me a good van to work off of, a good base for many years now. I do have a van now that's a E350, but it's a 5.4 gas, and it's set up as a box truck camper. It's pretty darn sweet, but I'm kind of ready to move into the uh, 7.3 liter diesel sort of realm which is one of my favorite motors in the world, or actually is my favorite motor. I've had two of them in the past, in my younger days, and I just sort of longed for those days. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, the power, the smell of it cranking up, the sound, the whistling of the turbo going down the road, I just miss those days. But uh, anyways, uh, you might say I'm a little nostalgic for those days. So I've been looking for the 7.3 liter diesel van and it's always like a near miss. It's always like you call up and say, oh, I just sold it last week. Should have taken the ad down. It's really, it's been like chasing a ghost. That's the only way I really know how to say it. But I finally found the one I was looking for or an example of the one I was looking for and I found it up in Chicago. And what, um, I found it I found it up in Chicago at a dealership and I'll normally don't want to buy from car lots I'd like prefer to buy from individuals but at this point I don't really care who has it <laughs> but uh, anyway so I found it at a dealership and I started talking to him this guy named Gary at this uh, dealership United Auto Exchange and um, they had it up for sale and it was like 12,900 it's a service body I'll throw a picture up of it um, maybe even we'll put a link to it in the uh, in the comments box, but I don't know how long that link will be good for. But uh, anyway, so you know, as usual, it looks really great, you know, in the pictures and highlights only the good stuff, which is you know expected. But um, I had him send me a few more pictures and do like a cold start up. You know, he walked out there with me on the phone, and you know, when it comes to a 7.3 liter diesel, most of the problems that that exists with the motor you can tell right when you start it up so I'm not going to really go into that part of it but um, so a cold start is very important so it started right up and I don't know if I mentioned it had 88,000 miles on it it uh, looked like it was government owned so a lot of these vehicles that are government owned or they're um, used by you know um, municipalities you know same, same thing basically people that don't use them a lot um, they'll have low miles on them and I, and I checked the, and that's basically what I'm looking for and that's why it's so hard to find because people will say that those motors will go you know million miles and 750,000 miles and you know and every time you see one for sale it's got 400,000 miles on it and they'll say goes for a million miles but you know I don't really know about all that <laughs> I've had a couple of them 
you know, I'd say they probably would go a million miles if you took good care of them and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, they're really expensive to replace or expensive to work on in a van. They're hard to get to. You just about have to just pull the cab up to work on them, which, which can be done. But if you don't have like a lift laying around and all that kind of stuff, it might be kind of hard. So anyways, this is going to be a long video. I have to cut a lot of this out. So anyway, so basically, long story short, I found the van I was looking for. It was in Chicago. And I'm thinking to myself, I need to find a mechanic to go look at this, is what I told the guy. And he said, well, you should use Lemon Squad. And um, he said, you should use Lemon Squad. I said, oh, well, what's that? And it's basically like a national chain that... God, the planes are so loud. It's basically a national chain that will, they'll go out and inspect your cars for you. And he told me it was like around 100 bucks or something like that. And so I got online, I checked them out, did a little research and, you know, the reviews were mixed like usual with stuff like that. And um, so I thought I would give it a shot. And so I went and applied for, I mean, I filled out an application online and it turns out for a commercial vehicle, it was 249 or something like that. So I, I threw it on the credit card on that. And then I, Let's see. Oh yeah, I noticed this, you know, add-ons. You know, you can, you know, add on the Carfax and you can add on, you know, having a live inspector call you. So I thought that that would be good. Or at least what I thought was a live inspector to call me. And um, it was $29 extra. So it was $279 out the door. That's not bad for having someone do a little bit of initial legwork for you. I wasn't really too happy about the communication about when they were going. It said estimated time. And I know that's very hard to, to um, I know that's very hard to do because I work in the field and I know how that is. So um, anyways, guy down there taking pictures of his dog with quite the photography setup. A right, beautiful forest here. Anyway, so I don't know if I mentioned this, but I found this park just by looking at Google Maps. I mean, not Google Maps, Apple Maps. I just, whenever I'm somewhere and I, just like this, I need to kill some time, and I've got a, um, I got a flight to catch at 5:30 or whatever, 4:40 or 4 whatever time it is, 4:59. I'm just near the airport and just on a hike. So anyway, so the inspectors, they kind of just, I guess they just show up when they show up because that's just how they have to do it. They got to work around everyone's schedule, which is fine. And so I got a, um, I got a message. I didn't get a message. I logged on to the site because it told me my anticipated inspection day was the next day. So the, the next day happened. I didn't hear anything. And then the next day happened and I logged in. It says your inspection was done today, which was actually the day before yesterday. So I called the number. The lady was really nice on the phone, customer service lady, and said that the inspection was done and said she was going to have the tech or what I thought was the tech. Maybe I heard wrong or someone give me a call. To discuss this, and she was going to send the to get, to get to make sure the report gets sent over, which I got everything within about 20 minutes. Then I got a phone call from a gentleman named Travis, and he was well spoken and he uh, he was knowledgeable about the car and I mean about the van and and uh, he kind of told me what really I could see is, is that there's you know there's some surface rust here and there, which is no big deal. There's a couple places where the bed is kind of eaten through. It's not really a big deal to me. I can fix that. Everything else was pretty solid. Um, everything worked. Um, no leaking. Checked out. Everything checked out, basically. So they sent me a ton of pictures, and they were good pictures. There's just a ton of pictures. I felt pretty confident that he had done a pretty good inspection, only to find out that he wasn't actually the person who inspected the vehicle. So basically what, what he's doing is, is that he was taking someone else's inspection and he was just interpreting it for me, <laughs> which that really did nothing for me. And that cost me $29. And basically really, I was really looking forward more to that than I was this report. Cause I thought I could ask him a few questions and I thought maybe they might actually call me while they're there. You know, I didn't read all the terms and conditions and things like that. I just thought that, you know, they would, you know, kind of do their job, you know? so. Anyways, um, 
So for anyone who thinks that they're going to pay for this $29, you may want to try to find out if you can actually talk to your actual inspector because I was not able to and I was really disappointed about that. But I did notice that they did not take a picture of the doghouse off and if anyone knows the Econo line vans, the doghouse is the cover between the passenger and driver side just up under the dash and that's where the that's the cover for the back side of the motor. And they didn't even they didn't take that off and take a picture of that and I, I found that really hard to believe so I, I had I asked him to go out there and do it and he said he would he couldn't figure out how to get the cover off his name's Gary even though he told me that that the, the dealership had done a dealer prep $499 they were trying to charge me inspection pre-inspection of the vehicle this trail just went to nowhere so he told me that uh that he would take it off for me, but then he had trouble getting it off, and then I had to go to my van and send him a video or two to show him how to take it off. And he, they finally got it off, and he sent me a picture of the back side of the motor. And I just told him to leave it off, because when I get there, I'm just gonna take it off. And so finally, you know, I, I, I've seen enough. Pictures of the motor, seen um, the report, photos look good. I was confident about the low miles. I thought maybe you know it might be stored inside because of, it just looks so good. I kind of figured it might have been repainted or touched up at some point because the inside of the boxes were so looked used, which is fine. The outside looked pretty good, and you know I'm not expecting a Lamborghini here or anything like that. I, I do expect like you know I just wanted a good base to work off of. It doesn't have to be perfect. But, you know, they were asking $12.9 for it, and then they had these other fees on top of it. They had, you know, after I put a $500 deposit down, I learned about the document fees, which are, I was told, was government fees of like $250 or something like that, or, or, or $299. And then there was a $25 tax fee, and I'm going to put a picture of that up. And then there was a, what was it? It was a... 499 dealer prep fee, which is kind of funny to me because I, I don't even know what that is. I mean, that that should, I mean, I do know what it is. I looked it up. If you Google it, the first thing that pops up is, is that do not fall for this scam is what it says. Um, you know, the way I do business is it's my price, it's my price, and there's no like surprises. So um, it just seems, seems to me kind of shady. You know, if it's the price is, I mean, I understand I'm going to have to pay my own tax, my own tag when I get back. But if the price is twelve nine and the and the out the door price is thirteen eight or whatever, then that's like a thousand dollars more, or whatever it is. Um, so I'm already up a thousand more dollars than what I thought I was going to be. Plus, I got to fly up and, and look at it and having the inspection done, which I would not have done had it had I had it been in close proximity to me. So, anyways, and all of this is my fault too, by the way. Like, I don't know that I'll do this again. Um, I really don't. Probably we'll just wait for something, to, a unicorn to pop up closer to me that I can get to within, you know, let's say two hours. It's going to be my max. Anyway, so moving right along. So I, I basically had seen enough. We negotiated a deal. He knocked off a few hundred dollars and, you know, we went back and forth a few times. And because I didn't want to get up there because I, I knew they weren't going to negotiate with me once I got there. I just, I just, I just, I just knew they weren't going to do that. So anyway, so I book a flight. It's like 150, reasonable price. I got the Corona flight with on Delta with the uh, missing seat in the middle, and no one was on my row, so I really got to stretch out. That was kind of nice. Flew up here, really nice, smooth flight. A couple hours, land, get an Uber. Really nice Uber driver. He'd been a taxi driver for like 30 years, and uh, he had a lot to say. And uh, <laughs> anyways, um, so, so I, I get there and then I, I meet Gary and he comes out and, and he's really nice, um, nice guy. And we walk out to the van and I look around, they do a quick loop around it, get in it, the driver's side, started it up real quick, started it up really, really nice. The motor felt cold. I don't think anyone had started it that day. And, you know, like I said before, that's, or maybe it was in the last video that didn't record, but the, the diesels will reveal a lot when you first start them up. Maybe they don't start, they don't start right away. 
You might have a glow plug problem, you might have a glow plug relay, you could, it could be a number of other things, it could be fuel related, it could be, uh, could be um, what do you call it, uh, compression issues with the, the way it cranks and all that kind of stuff. I've got maybe 350, 400,000 miles under my belt with a 7.3, so I've kind of learned a thing or two about it over the years. Not an expert, but I did learn a few things about it, including, including back in the day, keeping the crank angle sensor in your glove box. So if you know anything about this, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, moving right along. <laughs> so open the driver's side, take a quick look, start it up, walk around to the passenger side, pull the doghouse back off. It, it wasn't fully installed, so it was easy to come off. And when I pulled it off, reached down to pull the latch up. I mean, you just saw all this rust everywhere. And you, you pull, and then you, you look, just, I mean, you're pull, and, and taking it off, it kind of pulls the mat up a little bit. And you, you lift the mat up, and there's holes in the floorboard. I mean, rusted completely through. Passenger side was a lot worse than the driver's side, but I mean, at that point, I'm just like, you know, the last thing I want to do is my new van, the van that I'm buying for, you know, the, the, the 20-year-old van I'm buying. I mean, there's a lot better specimens out there than that. It's to have to put new floor pans in it, and then if, th if that's there, there ain't no telling what else is there. And I just didn't have the time or the patience to just keep looking for stuff. But I, I just looked at this and said, man, based on what I see right here, I'll give you eight grand. And he said, no way. And I said, okay, well, no, I'm, I'm going to... Pack, I'm going to put this doghouse back on for you and I'm going to catch me a flight back to Atlanta. He says, well, let me see what I can do. And he came back and he said, the owner said he'll take $400 off. And I'm thinking, uh, I can't drive this thing back to Atlanta for 10 hours plus with holes in the floorboard. I mean, that's just kind of dangerous. I mean, then that might work for Fred Flintstone using your feet for brakes, but that doesn't work for me. <clears throat> so I just... And at that point, I was a little bit teed off, honestly, at Lemon Squad because they totally dropped the ball, in my opinion. I mean, I just think it's a fact that they just dropped the ball because they should have taken the cover off. And not only that, when you when you put your feet, when I put my feet in the floorboard, you can just hear all the crunching going on. I mean, I'm not trying to play the victim card here or anything like that, but I don't know what else to say. I mean, I'm going to ask for my money back and I'm going to see what they're going to say about it. And a part of me would like to ask for a reimburse, reimburse me for my flight because I never would have even come if they had showed me that. Anyways, that's where I'm at with those guys right now. And I just wanted to put this out there for anyone who ever, who's ever thinking about using Lemon Squad or, or, you know, driving across or flying across the country to look at your, your vehicle, etc. So, anyway, that's pretty much it. It's a beautiful trail here. I'm going to... Um, put up some footage of that and I'll just uh, enjoy the rest of my day. I got a couple more out. I got a couple more hours here and then I'll start moseying my way towards a corner somewhere where I can get picked up from Uber and uh, make my way back to the airport. That's pretty much it. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all I really had to say today. That was a lot and uh, we'll uh, I see it's 20 minutes now. I'll see if I can cut this this dialogue part down some. And uh, we'll just go from there. And then I'll post another video and we'll see what Lemon Squad says. I'm really disappointed that I didn't take any footage of the of me viewing the van for the first time, but I was so disappointed that I didn't even think it was even worth breaking my camera out for. I didn't even think I would even want to make a video on it. I don't know why, because um, this actually serves as a lesson to me and maybe it will serve as a lesson to you as well. So anyways, uh, that being said, I'm going to close this video out and if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, just leave them in the uh, comment section and um, we'll see you guys in another video. Take care. <laughs>